here's how I made this object inside of Valence 3D. This is a new 3D modeling app that works on iPhone and iPad. And right now I actually got it running on the Vision Pro. And so, believe it or not, this was entirely modeled on here. And from this app, I sent it to my table to preview an AR. And I'll show you a little bit about how we did that. So let's go ahead and start a new file. All right, so here's a new scene inside of Valence. Wherever I click and drag, I can rotate around to see the environment. And if I go to the plus button, I can add a new object. In this case, I'm gonna add an icosphere. I'm gonna set it to dual and reduce that. Uh, you can, yeah, you can increase the size and whatnot. If we go to the resolution, we can change how many icospheres there are. I like that about, I like that amount. We'll go ahead and hit confirm. I got my dog right here. Come here, Slinky. All right, so with that icosphere here, we can, oops, let me go ahead and undo that. If we go to focus, we can see the entire shape. And what I'm gonna do is select the geometry. So I'm gonna select polygon mode or face selection. I can grab individual faces. And if I click the shell icon, I can grab all those faces. So the first thing we're gonna do is extrude the geometry. So I click on this. If we long press on it, you can either, you can keep faces together or extrude them separately. I'm gonna choose uh, extrude separately. And now when I pull on the geometry, you can actually make some pretty cool shapes. So that's our first shape. Next, I'm going to go to the inset option and click on that and inset all of these faces a little bit. There we go. Next, I'm going to extrude again and maybe push it inwards. Then I'm going to do another inset. And what's nice is all of these are being selected. You can see all the polygons are all working their magic. Now we're gonna to go to the poke tool and I'm going to poke geometry out to create these sharp shapes. Now I want all these shapes to be reflective, so I'm gonna make them a separate object by clicking on this icon here, which creates a sub mesh. With that sub mesh, we can now apply different materials to different parts of the model. So for all of those, um, all of those bits, I want those to have like more of a mirror-like texture. So I'm gonna to go to their materials down here and increase the metallic strength so that they're highly meta uh, metallic. And then we're gonna reduce that roughness so that they're highly reflective. If we deselect the background, you can now see what we have. We have these highly reflective objects and then everything else is kind of like that matte white. I wanna swap out that material as well. So we're gonna scroll up to our materials and then that one's the first sub mesh. We're gonna change that from a white color. Uh, you can kind of just, oops, go select the white color and we can change that to any color we want. I think like, a, I mean, I was doing like a green before, but let's do like a teal shape or a teal color. Then we can change the metallic amount uh, and increase the specularity. We'll go to the roughness and maybe adjust the roughness a little bit. I'm gonna add a clear coat so it just has a nice little layer of gloss on it. All right, it looks pretty good. Um, I might add a little bit more roughness to the material. So I'm gonna select, um, I can just select the background and let's go to the roughness, increase that roughness. And maybe, maybe I'll boost the metallic strength a little bit. Cool, so now we have this kind of shape. Now that I'm all done with the 3D model, I wanna bring this, so I'm gonna hit the home button so just I can see the whole object out far. If you ever have a little part selected, you can click on the focus mode to zoom into it. But I like to work on the home mode where I can see the whole shape. And now that I have this new shape, we want to export this uh, onto the table. So we go to the export options, and then we have an option called view in AR. If I tap on that, you can choose the uh, units that you want it to be converted to. I'm gonna leave it as meters and hit confirm. And then it looks the same, right? It's still on that like 2D mesh. But if you click view in your space, it loads it into uh, augmented reality right on your table. And I can pinch with two fingers to scale it down. And then with one hand, I select that white bar and pull it to the table. I'll put it right here and then I'll tap to deselect it. And now I have this new object that we just finished making in Valence 3D on the Vision Pro. And for a lot of that, we did it one-handed because I had my dog in the other hand for a lot of that. And now we have these two unique shapes. And what's cool is um, this is all inside of Valence 3D, a new 3D modeling app. Um, and we can grab either object here and I can control this one with this right hand. And I can control this one with my left hand by looking at it and moving. And so now, this hand controls that rotation and this hand controls the other rotation. If the objects are too close together, they will occlude each other. So I'm gonna space them out a little bit. 
So this one has some space, and this one has some space. And there we go. And so now you can see that I can spin this one with my right hand, and I can spin this one with my left hand, all while holding a dog. And each one has a little bit of momentum. But yeah, now we have a nice augmented reality object, and we were able to 3D model that entirely on the Vision Pro. Um, and it, yeah, this is, this is freaking fantastic. Oh yeah, I'm vegan. The bacon's not for me, the bacon's for her. All right, cool. Hopefully that helps.